main character resolve, change, or steadfast? Will the main character ultimately hold on to his original motivation or exchange it for a new motivation? Well, it's a lot more complicated than that, but it's also a lot more simple than it sounds. It's not asking, does your main character succeed or not? It's not asking if your main character is good or not. It's not asking if the audience is rooting for them or not. It simply says, does your main character's essential nature change or remain the same when all is said and done at the end of the story? Well, what is your main character's essential nature? Are we talking about everything changing? No. Can everything change? Yes. But in your story, there is a central personal issue that the main character has, something that is the defining element of their character, even if it's underplayed. And in regard to that particular defining element, that we sort of say, this is what their personality revolves around, or it's essential cornerstone in the foundation of their belief system. Do they hold on to that, or do they discard it to adopt something else by the end of the story? To give you an idea of what we mean by change in steadfast, we're going to look at some video clips of changing characters and steadfast characters. We'll start with the changing ones, and we have um, three different examples. We're going to stop after each example, and uh, I'll discuss what we've just seen a little bit. Uh, if you could take the paper off that shows when the program's going to begin, the remote control will work for the video, because it won't go through the sheet of paper. So, our first clip now is going to be looking at uh, Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. Now, we have several different versions in the montage. The first one shows Scrooge in his old form, his old nature. Several different storytelling examples, story encoding examples, of how Scrooge has been one way. Then we see another montage with all of the same pieces shown with specific scenes that were created to illustrate why that character has changed, how they have changed, to let the audience know that they are not the same in regard to those same examples. So let's begin now with the introduction of Scrooge's character in this montage from several different examples. Okay, so in that brief montage, we were able to take a look at how the filmmakers set up Scrooge in each case, and of course how Dickens originally envisioned it, to show that in this particular instance, here's an example of how Scrooge is, another example of how Scrooge is, another example of how Scrooge is, and then to go back to the exact same situations and show Scrooge reacting completely differently in regard to the very same thing in each case. In this way, we're able to do a comparison between the way Scrooge has become and the way he was. Now, if he did the same thing, he would have been steadfast. Because we see him doing it differently this time, we can tell that he's a different person. Same situation, different response. Scrooge has changed. Now, another example of a changing character can be found in uh, Crimes and Misdemeanors. Uh, before we go to the example, I want to set this up a little bit for you. Crimes and Misdemeanors is a real interesting film by Woody Allen. If you've never had a chance to see it, take a look at it because it's astounding in its craftsmanship. But here's what it's got. It's got two completely separate, parallel stories. Now, Dramatica defines a story as a complete argument that contains, is self-containing all of its own dramatic elements necessary to make that argument. So, we have two complete arguments going side by side. Some of the people know other people in the other stories, and then most of them don't. They are involved in some of the similar areas and sort of cross paths, but in fact, each story could exist completely without the other story. One has a main character that is Martin Landau, and he plays Judah Rosenthal. Judah Rosenthal is a very famous wealthy doctor at the peak of his career, probably facing retirement down the line. He's about to have a wing of a hospital or something named for him, and he's having an affair and cheating on his wife. The girl threatens to go public. It would ruin everything he'd worked for. So he contacts his brother, who's in touch with the criminal element, and the brother arranges to have the girl killed. And although the word killed is never really discussed, Judah knows full well what's going to happen. For the rest of the story, he grieves and struggles and pulls his hair out over this terrible decision he's made because it goes against his entire moral upbringing with a lot of flashbacks to his childhood. But in the end, after all that grieving, the fact is, he kind of learns to deal with it. 
And the message of that story is that if you give up your moral beliefs, especially from the Jewish background, according to Woody Allen, that he's talking about, if you give up your moral beliefs, it's okay. You can live a better life, you can be successful, and you don't have to, to worry about having a lot of guilt. The other story has Woody Allen playing the lead, the main character. And in that story, he's a documentary filmmaker who has finally his big break. And in that story, he is tempted to go against his morals in exchange for all kinds of success. Instead, this cat sticks by his guns. Woody Allen holds onto his moral beliefs. He sticks with things and remains steadfast rather than changing like uh, Judah Rosenthal does. And in the end, Woody Allen ends up having nothing. He loses his career, he loses his girl, he loses his big break. And the story of this one, which ran parallel, is that if you stick by your moral beliefs, you're very likely to get screwed. Now, Woody Allen put the two of these together, making a very bold statement by having two stories in the same work, so the audience can stand back and compare them. And that's why Dramatica defines a work as the finished piece of material the author created, not as being a story. Therefore, a work may contain two parallel stories, it may contain sub-stories going off a main story, or subplots, or sub-themes. It could have a tale and a story. It could have two tales. It could just be one tale. Lots of different combinations. It could be like rice pudding with a lot of raisins in it. The work is whatever the author wants to do storytelling-wise, but the story itself, that's a complete argument that's self-contained with all its own elements. So, these stories run in parallel until the very end, the scene we're about to see, where the two main characters sit down at a piano bench together at a party, and Martin Landau explains how he's come to change, and Woody Allen explains how he hasn't, that he's still holding on to his beliefs. Let's take a look at our third example of a changing character, Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. Now again, before we look at it, a brief word. Luke doesn't change in a great big way. Luke doesn't change uh, by having some major catharsis. But you know there's that moment where he's got the targeting computer at the end, and he has to make a choice to trust his abilities or not. Now, all along, he's been testing his abilities. He's been trying himself out and saying, am I good enough to do this? Am I good enough to do that? I want to learn from here. I want to learn from you. And he wasn't sure of himself. The whole message of the story for Luke is reach the point where you stop trying to find out if you're good enough and just believe you are, and then you'll find you'll get the job done. But will you? That's the leap of faith. It's a small one, momentary. He doesn't grieve over it throughout the story like Judah Rosenthal, Rosenthal, but he does uh, have to come to that moment and make that choice. So let's take a look at that famous clip at the end of episode four of Star Wars. So that gives us an idea of changing characters. I think we understand that now. It can be a small momentary change that wasn't really grieved over, but sort of uh, describes the course of the action someone takes in the background, like with Luke Skywalker. Or with Judah Rosenthal, it could be something one grieves over uh, continually and eventually works oneself to the point where one uh, is able to change, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, that's another story. But uh, it can also be like with Scrooge, where he holds out against change as long as he can and then has one cathartic moment when it finally all comes together and he no longer can hold out and has to give in in a big old leap of faith. Okay, so many different ways to portray change, but the key is, does your main character, in regard to that central personal element, are they the same at the end of the story as they were at the beginning? If they are, they're steadfast. If they aren't, they've changed.